Next, we're going to take a peek at how the planets are moving in Stellarium. So I'm going to actually uh, find Saturn here and go over to Saturn. Oh, it happens to be close to the moon. And I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit, although I'm not so interested in seeing the rings this time. right? So as cool as it is to watch Saturn, let me just show you what that looks like. It's pretty awesome. You can see all the moons orbiting around Saturn. It's super cool. As cool as that is, <clears throat> what we're interested in exploring here is how Saturn moves relative to the stars. All right, And so I'm, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see stars around Saturn. And I'm going to set time going so that we're getting maybe um, a month going by every second. All right, So I'm looking down at my calendar down here. I'm already in the year 2027. But I want to actually get this thing going pretty fast. All right. That's about what I want. And what you notice <clears throat> is a very unusual motion for Saturn. Saturn moves relative to the stars from day to day to day and month to month. <clears throat> but you see that it turns around and goes back and forth. So it's almost like two steps forward, one step back, right? It's doing two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward. Okay. And this is these loops is what we call retrograde motion. Um, we, in particular, that backward motion, the one step back is what we call retrograde. Um, and it's a very weird motion, but it's something that all the planets in the sky do. So um, we call it retrograde, sometimes we refer to it as loops, but I, I like that idea of it's two steps forward, one step back, because Saturn really does make its way all the way around the sky. So it, it does eventually make its way around 360 degrees, but it does it through two steps forward and one step back. So that's how Saturn does it. Let's go take a quick peek at, um, at, at, the, at Mars. Now you may notice like, okay, what's, how long does it take Saturn to do one of these loops? So I can count by the months, right? So if I'm going here, uh, September, boy, it takes almost like a year to do a full loop from there to there maybe a little less than a year yeah a little less than a year but not by much um to do that whole sort of cycle of two steps forward oh there goes jupiter see jupiter is doing its own little dance too all right let's find mars and let's just see how it kind of compares oh there's mars wow whoa, whoa. <laughs> i need to zoom out a little more this is crazy it's taking like a hundred steps forward and then one step back. Look at that. Whoa. <laughs> and then it slows down eventually and turns around. And then it goes. Okay, so it's doing like, yeah, a hundred steps forward and then one step back. Wow. So you can see how that would have been even sort of more mysterious. Um, maybe both of these are sort of mysterious to ancient astronomers in particular. But it really looks like Mars is just cruising along and then all of a sudden it just stops and turns around for a second. And so any model of our solar system and how planets move in our solar system needs to be able to explain this retrograde motion. It's really unusual. All right, so I wanted you to see that in the night sky. It's one of these things that's very difficult for us to observe with our eyes in the night sky because you have to take careful note of the position of the planets you know, day after day for an entire year. In fact, let's just notice here, like, how long does Mars go before it experiences retrograde motion? So I'm going to kind of watch the calendar. And here is uh, retrograde. Okay. That was, like, at the start of 2085. And there it is again at the start of, like, 2087. So it actually took, like, two years for Mars to go in that retrograde. Okay, cool. All right, I hope that's useful as you're uh, looking at Stellarium.